on Iwo Jima. Our tanks come in range of Jap 77 millimeter guns, which score several hits. Marines dig out hidden and camouflaged installations. are used to burn the Japs out of natural cave positions in volcanic ridges and hills. Destroying enemy troops in underground pockets. Rockets brought up on truck carriers augment artillery, tank, and rifle fire. The Battle of Eo lasts 30 days. <laughs> Invasion of Panay Island, Central Philippines. 7th Amphibious Attack Forces land troops of the 40th Division, 8th Army, on the southeast coast of the island. Capture of Panay opens second largest Philippine port to American shipping. Little enemy opposition is encountered as our troops quickly establish a beachhead near Tigbawan, about 14 miles west of the important harbor city of Iloilo. Filipino civilians welcome the invading forces. Major General Rapp Brush, commander of the 40th Division, directs the push inland. Opposition fails to develop as units move ahead. Contact is made with strong Filipino guerrilla forces controlling all island areas except the Iloilo region. After overcoming light Jap resistance centered in concrete pillboxes and trenches, our troops advance through the town of Molo. Tanks and infantry mop up Jap machine gun emplacements and resistance pockets outside Iloilo. Advance units of the 40th Division capture Iloilo 20th March. Japs destroyed 70% of the city, but harbor facilities were undamaged. Lieutenant General Robert L. Eichelberger, commanding the 8th Army, enters Iloilo shortly after its capture. Filipino civilians welcome our men. Honoring the Filipino guerrillas for their services against the enemy on Panay, General Eichelberger presents the Distinguished Service Cross to Colonel Macario Peralto, their commanding officer. Air Force films of an airborne hospital which solved one problem of the Leyte campaign. A field station is set up at Manarao at Leyte by parachuting a medical team and equipment into the jungle. Skilled surgeons, surgical assistants, delicate instruments, anesthetics, medicine and plasma are dropped in to help units which have fought through the jungle beyond the reach of overland supply. The hospital was established to service the 1st and 3rd battalions of the 511th Parachute Infantry Regiment. Both C-47s and small liaison planes are used for dropping the equipment and personnel. Stacking ammunition brought in for the front lines. Preparations are made for a trip into the jungle where the fighting is going on. Ammunition and rations are included along with the medical supplies. Purpose is to bring out wounded for hospitalization. Native animals are used to cover the rough jungle terrain. As soon as an adequate airstrip is cut out, the L-4 and L-5 liaison planes are used to bring in vital medical supplies and take out badly wounded patients.
A valuable supply of blood plasma is brought in for the jungle hospital. A group of wounded being brought back from the front. Some of the less seriously wounded ride in on Carabao. A patient is helped into the hospital camp. Preparing to operate. As many as 70 patients a day are cared for at this jungle station. Many of the wounded require emergency treatment and would be unable to survive if they had to wait for care until reaching the base hospital. After the more serious cases have been given emergency treatment, they are evacuated by air with an improvised litter installed in an L-4 plane. B-32 Dominator, new and powerful companion of the B-29. The Dominator, second American plane in the very heavy bomber class, is the equal of the Superfort in range, speed, and destructive capacity, although its 135-foot wingspan and 83-foot length make it slightly smaller than the B-29. The Dominator carries more armament than the Superfort. It was first planned as the twin of the B-29. However, the aerial engineer and the pressurized cabins were taken out of the B-32, which was then redesigned as a more conventional plane. Four right engines give the Dominator an upper altitude speed of more than 350 miles per hour. The bomb bays carry a maximum load of 20,000 pounds. Propellers, reversible to negative pitch, permit the plane to taxi backwards and considerably reduces the length of roll necessary in landing. Dominators are being prepared for action against Japan. War dogs trained at 9th Air Force Headquarters help military police carry out their security, protective, and rescue duties. The animal schooling period lasts from four to six weeks, during which time they are taught obedience, suspicion of strangers, and attack against resisting and armed persons. Striking always for the right or weapon arm, the dog will attack anyone upon whom they are turned loose or who actively tries to defend himself. However, they will not maul a person who remains still and offers no resistance. Each dog is assigned to an MP, and an effort is made to continue the man-dog combination once it is established. The dogs are confined at all times when not on actual duty, are fed only once a day, and are shown no particular kindness over and above the friendliness which develops between the man-dog team. Under this treatment, war dogs become highly vicious. Therefore, they are always worked on a leash, except in emergencies. The diet of the dogs is supposed to contain two pounds of meat per day, but it's not always possible to get this food in the theater of war. However, the dogs are well fed and cared for. Any injury or illness is promptly attended to by soldier veterinaries. The dogs, with their keen sense of smell and hearing, are particularly valuable in trailing fugitives, lost personnel, or escaped prisoners of war through woods or countryside. They not only enable the MP to cover more ground in patrolling, but help him to guard and protect the area with greater efficiency. When buildings collapse during bombing or shelling, the dogs are used to send out people trapped beneath the debris and to aid in the rescue work. The animals quickly and surely lead rescuers to the victims of such raids and are responsible for saving many lives. Trainers write letters to the dog's former masters. 
British civilians donated their pets to a training school operated in England, and the school supplies the animals to the Allied military. The war dogs are proving a great help in sentry duty. The MP leads the tethered dog along the downwind side of the area. If an intruder is present upwind from the team, the dog betrays his presence by becoming nervous or barking. Favorite among the dogs is the highly intelligent German Shepherd. Dwight D. Eisenhower at Reims, France for the presentation of the presidential citation to the 101st Airborne Division. The citation streamer is affixed to the colors by General Eisenhower before addressing the 12,000 men of the 101st, veterans of Cherbourg and Holland Airborne Operations, and defenders of Bastogne. Officers and men of the 101st Airborne Division, I have the honor to present the Supreme Commander, General Eisenhower. It is a great personal honor for me to be here today to take part in a ceremony that is unique in American history. Never before has a full division been cited by the War Department in the name of the President for gallantry in action. This day marks the beginning of a new tradition in the American Army. With that tradition, therefore, will always be associated the name of the 101st Airborne Division and of Bastogne. Yet you men, because you are soldiers of proved valor and of experience, would be the last to claim that you are the bravest and the best. All the way from where the Marines are fighting on Iwo Jima, through the Philippines and Southeast Asia, on through the Mediterranean and along this great front and on the Russian frontiers, are going forward day by day, those battles, sustained by the valor of you and the other Allied units that are beating this enemy to his knees. They are proving once and for all that dictatorship cannot produce better soldiers and can arouse democracy. I know that you will meet every test of the future like you met it at Bastogne. Good luck and God be with each of you. RAF and the American 8th Air Force strike at tactical objectives beyond the Rhine. For a week preceding the Allied Cross Rhine Drive, air power pulverizes Basel and other strong points. The rocket firing typhoons cut down installations of the Nazi defense network. bombers over Basel. Between 22nd and 24th March, the RAF dropped 1,700 tons on troops and positions at Basel, 1,975 tons on Nazi concentrations along the northern edge of the Ruhr and at Bockholt, above Basel. Friday night, 23rd March, just before the Allied armies begin streaming across the Rhine, the RAF Bomber Command blazes the way for the ground troops. 
The brilliantly clear weather holds all through the evening. Incendiaries burn out Nazi installations which might disrupt our bridgehead operations. Dawn, 24th March, south of Paris. Paratroopers begin to assemble for the greatest single airborne operation in all history. Officers and men of the U.S. 17th Airborne Division don their gear before entering the troop carriers. The aircraft are C-47s loading 18 men and for the first time Curtis Commando transports which carry 36 paratroopers. The C-46 Commando is fitted with two doors and drops its shooters from both sides simultaneously. Meanwhile, at Allied bases in England, the British 6th Airborne Division begins another phase of the operations. Activities are in exact synchronization with the takeoffs of the U.S. 17th Airborne from France. Gliders jammed with equipment are ready to be hooked up to British Sterling bombers. Glider-borne Tommies get aboard for the trip to the bridgehead sector, where British commandos already have launched Marshal Montgomery's thrust across the lower Rhine. At the same time, the American glider-borne infantry is moving out of airfields in France. These units climb into the Waco or CG-4A glider. It normally carries 12 fully equipped soldiers or a combination of soldiers and equipment up to 4,000 pounds. The nylon rope is prepared for hooking the glider behind the tow ship. Ready for the takeoff. A glider can be hauled as fast as 150 miles per hour with its full load, although normal cruising speed behind a C-47 is 120 miles per hour. All American gliders in this operation are towed in pairs. The troops taken aloft constitute the 194th Glider Infantry Regiment. by French airfields, the paratroopers take off. Initial elements of Lieutenant General Lewis H. Brereton's 1st Allied Airborne Army on their way toward the Rhine. early dawn across the channel in England, a Sterling leaves the airfield with the first British glider to go aloft in the 24th March operations. Two types of gliders carry the British troops' weapons and supplies. The Hamel car, which can transport a light tank of approximately eight tons or any other equivalent load. The Horsa, which is the British standard glider and carries a load of three tons. Both are towed singly. Inside one of the gliders. Board 
a Sterling bomber as the glider train wings its way over the British countryside. Crossing the English Channel. Rendezvous point for the British and American aircraft is near Brussels. Streaming eastward across Belgium, the two great aerial task forces total 1,600 planes, 1,400 gliders, and 40,000 troops. Over the ruins of Belgian town. and British officers watch the air armada wing its way toward the objective. Approaching the Rhine River, one of our aircraft lies in flames near the river's bank. Paratroopers and parapacked supplies spill out over the drop zone in the race basal area. In this leapfrog of enemy positions east of the Rhine, the objective of the airborne divisions is first to contain the German rear and then make a quick junction with the ground troops. be cut loose. At the signal glider from tow ship, the nylon tow rope is unhitched. First glider landings without mishap. Fighters and bombers have been maintaining a protective cover over the area which is infested with concealed flak positions. One of the crack-ups. This operation is a reversal of the Allied airborne tactics in Normandy and Holland. Here, the glider and parachute forces come in after the ground troops begin their cross-Rhine assault. Moving out against targets as mapped during the briefing sessions. Assembling squads and forming into fighting units, they spread out behind the Nazi lines. On the first day, the airborne troops capture six bridges across the Eisel River intact. They seize 4,000 German troops behind their own front lines. Neo Jima. Our tanks come in range of Jap 77 millimeter guns, which score several hits. Marines dig out hidden and camouflaged installations.
invasion of Panay Island, Central Philippines. 7th Amphibious Attack Forces land troops of the 40th Division, 8th Army on the southeast coast of the island. Capture of Panay opens second largest Philippine port to American shipping. Little enemy opposition is encountered as our troops quickly establish a beachhead near Tigbawan, about 14 miles west of the important harbor city of Iloilo. Filipino civilians welcome the invading forces. Rockets brought up on truck carriers augment artillery, tank, and rifle fire. Battle of EO lasts 30 days. used to burn the Japs out of natural cave positions in volcanic ridges and hills. Destroying enemy troops in underground pockets. 